So here at the Off Grid Living Festival, I'm in front of Energy Smart Water's uh, amazing mobile stand with a whole range of products for using renewable energy, particularly when it comes to heating water. Innovative ways of heating water on grid and off grid. So let's take a closer look at inside the trailer. G'day Norm. G'day Glenn, how are you? Yeah, good. Good to see you again. G'day, Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, but today it's all about everything off-grid. And uh, as you probably know, this is my everything off-grid channel, but I'm here with Norm uh, from Energy Smart Water. G'day, Norm. G'day, Glenn. How are you? Good. Look, I've known Norm for a long time, and Norm, you've done some amazing things at my lab. Um, what have you got here today? Yeah, look, Glenn, we're, uh, we've got our off-grid training trailer uh, that we get around to different shows and show uh, mums and dads traditionally what we can do with um, off-grid hot water. And uh, we're running a couple of products here. One's obviously our Actor off-grid range and, and um, making hot water from excess power that you may be sending to the grid, uh, which we all know we're going to be paying for soon. So we can harness that and linearly charge it into a, into a hot water storage tank. In a lot of ways, simple terms that, that I use for mums and dads is uh, it's like a trickle charger for your hot water unit. So instead of turning the element on at 3 kilowatts or 4 kilowatts and blasting it to heat the tank up, we're going to heat it up over at the duration duration of the day with any excess power that you might have available. That works quite well and the other product we have is our ROSC20 which is a dedicated 2 kilowatt system off grid supplying power into our thermal battery which is our Enemax tank uh, which has a very low temperature loss out of the tank. Uh, we can do multiple things with the tank, we can also hook up a heat pump to the tank or another external heat source, heat hot water, hydronic heating or a swimming pool or a spa, uh, put a wet back into the tank and, and heat the tank that way. There's so many different applications that we can do. I guess the, the other thing too, everyone that we, we talk to say, I've never seen this tank before, is it new? It's not new to Australia, we've had the tank here for almost 30 years. One of our oldest tanks is still operating in the Pian Hospital in New South Wales today, um, which is about 28 years old. And the tank was more used in commercial applications, but with new technologies and what we're doing today, thermal battery, it's perfect. The tank has like about a two kilowatt heat loss over a 24 hour period, standing still at 65 degrees C. You say 20 years? 20 years. Right, yeah. so no sacrificial anode required? No sacrificial anode, um, and that's another beauty with a guy that was just here before has got an issue where he's got um, uh, bore water, and he says, my anode, I'm replacing elements all the time. He said, well, in this situation, we don't have that problem. The same water we heat up is the same water we heat up every day. The water that we use for potable water is running through a heat exchange coil. It means you get clean, hygienic hot water, um, no real moving parts, and long lifespan. Uh, we've got many, many tanks that are in the, the, the 20 plus year old age operating especially in commercial zones where they're doing a lot of hard work. The home's not doing a lot of hard work. So, But we have many, many, many applications, uh, as I said, nearly 30 years of installations around the country. Uh, we also design our systems here and manufacture in, in Melbourne. And we um, supply into about 10 other countries the technologies that we developed over those numbers of years. So it's, um, it's a really interesting space. It keeps you keeps you uh, thinking hot water. We, we're uh, a, a hot water business and a plumbing business, but um, sometimes some people say, why are you going down this track? But um, it's uh, we've got to move with the change, and uh, we've got some really exciting projects up and running now. So tell me more about the, the AC Thor. I mean, it's just it's a box on the wall, basically. What's special yeah, about it? It's, it's this box here, Glenn, and uh, what we're doing in this application, because we're work, looking at an off-grid situation, we're using, we've got a one kilowatt of power up on the roof uh, of the trailer and we're charging our batteries down below and then that excess power that's sitting there that we're not using we're now pushing back and doing a linear charge through the act door to heat the hot water tank so in this case we've got a very small amount about 150 watts coming in off the solar panels and we're pushing about 135 back to the actor, and the actor's heating the tank, which is sit currently sitting at 54.5 degrees. So even though that's a big element in the tank, it's actually running at 160 watts or so. Yeah, the, the tank, or this case is a three kilowatt element, will run from zero to three kilowatts, and it's linear, so it's gonna ramp up and down depending on what's available. 
Yeah. And that unit there, that's the three phase or the single phase? This is a single phase unit. It can do up to six kilowatts on the relay mode. It can also do space heating, like electric floor heating. We can do resistive elements like in a, in a spa or a three kilowatt element or an infrared radiator panel. But then we have the three, the three um, phase unit, the 9, 9S, and that can do multiple heat sources or it can do nine kilowatt in the element. We're building a new tank now that will do 18 kilowatts. So um, out of one Enamax tank, which is a real fast punch. And we got some applications where people want that. They haven't got enough space to put the heat pump and they want to put uh, more power in the tank that is available. So we're just developing that tank now as well. So this is the Enamax tank. Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah, Glenn, this is a tank that's been in the country for almost 30 years. It was traditionally called a Rotex tank, which a lot of people are probably more familiar with. Um, but rebranded now, it's a OEM to, to obviously Energy Smart Water, and this is our own brand, Enamax. So uh, it's a 500 litre tank, which can have multiple coils. So we can do hot water, hydronic heating, and a spa and a pool off one tank, uh, depending on the heat source in the tank can be heated with the actor, can be heated with a heat pump, any waste reclaim energy we can put into the tank and make hot water. So our web of energy talks about bringing multiple heat sources in and taking multiple heat sources out. But there's a lot of diversity in the tank as a thermal battery. So it sort of works like a battery does. You don't have a battery for your, um, your stove and a battery for your lights and a battery for whatever. And you don't have a, a solar panel that heats one battery and a wind turbine that heats another battery. This is a heat battery, isn't it? Yeah, it's so like a heat bank in a way, battery where we can do multiple heat sources with it um, and bring multiple energies into it as well. We have two variants. We have a 300 litre tank as well, which is the smaller tank, which is over here. This tank is uh, actually configured with our ROSC20 unit, which is a standalone DC heating system. And this is running off two kilowatts of PV, connected directly to, to DC panels. So you can't use the, the PV panels for anything else but the hot water unit, so it's a standalone system. But we can heat the tank up to 80 degrees with this element and make the hot water just like we do with the other one. We have a backup element, which is a boost element, which is only there really to keep the tank at 55 degrees if we have a really cold month. But look, we can hook up the three kilowatts to this system to shoulder colder months. Most of the systems we've sold today we're using on a bigger tank and they're not running out of any hot water at all um, and without even using any boost so it's been quite a quite a good product and um, uh, again we can make hot water anywhere with this thing we just hook it up with some solar panels and away we go we don't actually need power so it's actually an off-grid system even if you're on grid effectively it's an off-grid system because it's self-contained it doesn't self need the grid yep fully self-contained so we get a lot of people in this space that mums and dads that have got um, still a very good feeding tariff you know 60 cents and but if they touch that system they're bugging they're going to get back to the same rate that we're all on. And, uh, but by adding this system, it's not connected to the grid. They can add this to the home, put another two kilowatts, make hot water, and still still retain their 60 cent um, feed-in tariff off their, uh, their original system. So it's quite popular in that space as well. So Norm, um, you've cut a hole in your tank. Yeah, look, Glenn, it's um, important that we, we, you know, with what we do here, touch and feel, we want people to experience what we're doing and, and understand the technology. Uh, we've cut a hole in the tank, so we can't fill this one up with water. Uh, but it shows the insulation property of the tank, which is very important. We only lose about two degrees temperature out of this tank over a 24-hour period, as I mentioned before. But it also explains a bit more that this is just a big bucket of water that we're heating and then we transfer the heat to the 316 stainless steel coil or a titanium coil depending on what we're trying to do, whether it's hard water or a pool or a spa. The 316 stainless steel water into the, through the coil is your pressurised water for your, your home, for your, your appliances. Now it's corrugated for a couple of reasons, not just so we can make it roll into the tank easy. The other one is it gives us the biggest surface area for the heat transfer from the bucket water into the coil, the water inside the coil. And the other one is that the tank will cool and, and heat as we heat it up. So we'll get some expansion and contraction in the tank and that allows this coil to move so we don't get any scale build up in the coil. So we can have really hygienic hot water out of this system, which is why it's used in a lot of hospitals and nursing homes all around the country as well. 
the first water in is the first water out. We're not the crud that might sit in a normal hot water tank is not the crud that we get out of our system. So it's uh, but yeah, it's mainly cut away. So you know, touch and feel experience and and understand the technology. Now it's a plastic tank, but most hot water tanks are metal. They are metal, and you know with metal tanks we have problems with anodes where we have um, problems then with the elements that break down because the, no one replaces anodes. They're very very rarely looked at, um, and corrosion starts to happen and we have issues. So in this tank being fully plastic and, and isolated from any electrolysis with the, the incoming water, um, we don't have those issues. So we have a long lifespan. We don't have any breakdown or we don't have any really moving parts in the um, thermal battery side of things with using electric elements. So uh, it adds more resistance to the tank as well. And as I mentioned before, we've got tanks that are still operating that are nearly 30 years old in the in the commercial field, not in the residential field. So, so is this a pressurised tank? Unpressurised. So the tank's unpressurised, just a big bucket of water, and the pressurised water is in the coil only, or multiple coils are pressurised. We're a closed loop circuit, so your hydronics he heating water is separate from your potable water, and your swimming pool water would be separate from the potable water and hydronic heating water. Right, so you can mix all types of water services in this one one tank as a heat source? We can and because we can heat the tank to 80 degrees we can do underfloor heating which we might want 30 degrees so we knock the temperature back. Uh, we can do potable water at 65, 50 degrees. We can have our pool water at 28 degrees. We can, because we're just a big battery and what we do with it when we take it out is how we manage it to get it back to where we want it. So Norm, um, what's this unit here? It looks like a wall heater. It does look like a wall heater, Glenn. It's actually a UVC air purification uh, unit. Uh, Stereo White make this unit, so it's come out of Europe. And it actually has two UVC lamps inside the unit. No HEP filter, no filter at all. And we can actually take the air from the room and clean the air, sterilise the air, and kill any bacteria. So it could be coronavirus bacteria. It's been tested in the lab up to 99%, 99.9% effective. Um, but it could be your, any bacteria that you might have in the office or the schoolroom or the home. And quite a, an easy addition. It's on at the moment. It's very quiet. Um, it's just passing air through, cleaning the air, and keeping um, the environment nice and friendly. So there's no filters to replace? No filters to replace, so we don't need to put our heads mat suit on to, to pull out some du uh, dust particle bags that might have coronavirus in the bag. Um, this is actually pure, clean, clean air. We can run the device on an eight hour time, five days a week, and almost get 10 years lifespan out of the lamps. So the lamps in the, this unit are actually very um, special because they last twice as long as a normal UVC lamp that's on the market. But setting it up the right way, we can make it last for a long time and be very effective in the, in the home or, or business. Because the type that use filters, the size of the filter determines the size that the bacteria will catch. More or less, and um, also you're pushing the air through a filter, so you're probably slowing it. As the filter gets blocked up, you get less air through the filter. This is a free-flowing air device that'll move the air around a lot more better in the, in the room. We've seen some devices that are up a lot higher as well, but we want to take the air from the low part of the room and circulate right around the room, not just treat the air up the top where we're not actually breathing. So um, it's portable. We can move it. We've got some people that have got them in offices and they move it from the office into the boardroom when they're having a board meeting, um, different, different, different applications. So it's been um, a journey getting the device approved, but uh, we're there now and um, we're getting a, a fair bit of interest start to happen. Great. Well, it's great to see innovation in uh, air, air purification. Yeah, and we're actually uh, keeping the air nice and clean while we're uh, doing our demo in our training trailer as well. Right, so El Dorado's got better quality air than it did yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Norm. Thanks, Glenn. Cheers.